Hello, everyone. It's Amy Clark from Earthlight Energies, and today is May 13th, 2021, and I'm here with the lovely Janet from Spirit Answers. Whoops, I guess I better make sure we're not uh, moving in and out of dimensions here with my virtual background. Um, anyway, so I am a, a certified Reiki practitioner and teacher. I'm owner and operator of Earthlight Energies, and welcome to the Wellness Project. I'm not doing a PowerPoint today because Janet and I decided we're just gonna have conversation style interview. So Janet, if you just wanna introduce yourself as far as uh, you can tell us as little or as much about yourself as you like, and, uh, and definitely information about Spirit Answers. Hi, I'm Janet. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> it's a lovely day. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Ame for um, this time and for sharing with everybody about my experiences and what I do. Um, I totally enjoy what I do. I love talking to people. I love sharing with people. I love giving messages from spirit. Spirit is such a large part of my life. And um, I am very blessed for the day that I met Emma. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I feel the same. <laughs> well, I met her through a, um, a lovely client that uh, we share, but you know, you, in a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> uh, but we uh, enjoy our conversations and we, we talk to everybody we can, okay, about this work, about passing on the messages that Spirit has. Um, it's not about where you are, what you're doing, or who you are. Spirit is for everyone. If you believe that's fantastic. If you don't, well, maybe we'll help you to believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe you could talk a little bit about your background as far as when you first started getting messages from spirit. And I know a little bit more about your story as to what happened later in life, but maybe if you could share with us, you know, if you was this from when you were a child, did this develop later in life? Um, what was your experience? Well, it actually started early in life for me. Um, as a, a small child, I remember seeing spirit. And I remember seeing these people walking around and I would talk to them and people would look at me like I'm nuts. Okay, but I couldn't help it. They were real. Mm -hmm. I saw them. And then when I was about nine years old, I was climbing the ladder to a bunk bed because I slept on the top bunk because I was the oldest, mm -hmm. not the tallest, but the oldest. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I fell backwards and I split my head open. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember being at the hospital and then shaving the top of my head. And I had this big bold spot and they had to stitch it all together. And I remember getting well, wicked headaches and still seeing these people around me and telling me I was going to be okay. And from then on, it's just, it, they were always there. Mm -hmm. They were my comfort. Yeah. Uh, and so, oops, I was disappeared right out of the screen there, but that might've been a good thing. So we could just hear Janet. Let's see if I can get a little closer here. Um, so when did you start doing, oh, and I guess, oh, I keep popping it out of the <laughs> screen here. Um, so when, uh, I know that one of the things that you told me when I met you is that you don't like the word psychic. No. So before we continue with your story, I just wondered if you could talk about what you call yourself and why you call yourself that. Well, actually it was um, friends of mine that kept calling me a spiritual consultant, that I was always consulting with the spirit because I always hated the word psychic. It seems so overused. Seems like a lot of the people that were called psychics were people that were accused of all kinds of nasty things. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to be associated with that word. Mm -hmm. And so when um, they started calling me the spiritual consultant, it, it fit more. It felt right. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. All right. Um, 
And when did you start doing this professionally? Professionally, about 22 years ago. Wow. Before that, I just did, I just passed on messages to everybody that spirit would pro <laughs> actually poke at me to give the messages to, which mm -hmm. was awkward at first because you're like, what the heck am I doing? Mm -hmm. You know, but they would give me a message and it would go around in my head and it'd go round and round and round until I gave that message. Right. So that's when I, I learned that I had to listen to spirit. Right. And I think that, you know, that's actually how my client met you because um, you were actually working in a, um, for a massage therapist and this, and the brother of my client came in to see you and you said, oh, your brother has special gifts. Your brother needs to get a hold of me. And you handed out the card and then um, the brother did get a hold of you. And then his brother who knew me um, said, oh, do you know a Reiki master? <laughs> and I said, you are kidding me, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, my brother was told from, he called you a psychic, sorry, oh. needed to, you know, come and see, see um, someone who does Reiki. And I said, sure, send him my way. And then when he started telling me, now it was so interesting too, because when he came in, I already had three or four clients that had come in and a couple of them were men. And they said, well, I got sent here because my wife was talking to a, a psychic. Sorry, I'm not trying to offend you, but that's what they were calling them. Um, and said that I needed to come to a Reiki master. And I often get referrals from people who are seeing spiritual counselors or, um, so yeah, we'll use the spiritual counselor word. And so I'm really grateful for that because it's them identifying that, you know, there's some heat, deep healing that has to happen for these clients. And, you know, um, there are alternative uh, modalities out there that can help people. And it doesn't have to just be Reiki. I mean, they refer them to all kinds of different people. And I do the same thing when someone comes in and if I feel that they need counseling or some kind of therapy, then that's where I send them. Because, I mean, Reiki supports those things, but doesn't necessarily replace them. Although some people have come to me and said, you know what, for all the therapy sessions I ever paid for, just having these Reiki sessions actually helped me. So I was grateful. Now he didn't know, like you didn't know me at that time. So it wasn't a direct referral to me from you. And then when he started telling me about Janet, I was like, oh my God, can I have her phone number? And then I called her. I said, hey, would you like to, you know, come in and do a reading for me? And she said, um, yes. And we're going to do an exchange. And I said, okay. So I had you come in and had the, like, I was just blown away by the reading I had. And you have to record your readings with um, Janet because she doesn't record them for you. And oftentimes she'll just start talking. <laughs> and it's like, where's my recorder? Wait, stop. <laughs> and this time in particular, I, you know, she's in this deep, relaxive Reiki session. Then all of a sudden her eyes open and she just starts telling me stuff. And I'm, and she's, scared me because I was like in this deep state giving her Reiki it was quiet peaceful and um you know and then I was like be quiet this is for you <laughs> I can't so you were saying that when they come to you and I know I've been around you a few times where you we're doing actual work together and then she'll go I have something to say nope you have to wait <laughs> and it's like no <laughs> I have to say it right now <laughs> anyway so if we go back to the question of like when you started to do this um, professionally, what made you take that leap from, you know, giving messages to people to actually starting to turn that into a business? Well, I was looking for something. Um, I had moved, I had made, made a big move in my life and uh, I was transitioning into um, what I truly wanted out of life. And um, I was at, actually I was at a tea house, and um, the lady that did the tea leaf reading came over to see me. Okay, she didn't know nothing about me. I've never met her before, and I was sitting in um, almost like a corner, and so nobody could come behind you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were protected by a big window, 
And uh, the tea leaf lady came up to me and I just looked at her and I just said, can I read you? She goes, what? <laughs> I was like, can I read you? She said, sure. Okay, but before that, somebody had come up behind me and shoved me in the back and those words came out of my mouth. Wow. There was nobody there. There was nobody there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when Spirit did that, my mouth just went crazy. Okay. And I started telling her about her daughter and what was going on and why she was doing the things she was doing. And the tea leaf lady sat there and went, <laughs> <laughs> and said, can we talk? I said, sure. So a couple of, a week later, we talked and that's when I actually started professional in reading. Mm -hmm. And what brought you to North Bay? A leap of faith. I asked Spirit, where do I need to go next? Okay. And they showed me the big green sign that says North Bay. Wow. So knowing nobody here, mm -hmm. I just took that leap of faith and came. And how long have you been in North Bay now for? I have been here for six years, almost six years. Wow. Holy moly. Yeah. Hmm. Well, North Bay is a very special place, and I actually got some information through uh, various sources, which I'll just say that for now, spiritual sources, about how powerful um, North Bay is. And there's um, energy nodes here, there's a stargate here, and there's other portals and vortexes here that, it's, and it's always um, when energy people come, energy workers come here, or people who are more in tune with spirit, they always get these, these conflicting feelings or energy around North Bay. And they say, and some have said it's like a battleground between, you know, these, these conflicting energies. So have you experienced any of that when you're, when you've been here, as far as those, um, that sense that there's a need to be here to, how can I phrase this? So, um, a sense to be here to help, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To balance out that energy, to bring that that more stronger, pure, good light into North Bay to help absolutely move out the other. Yeah. Absolutely, and the, like I've been places in North Bay where I had to just stop and absorb the energy. Okay, and I could feel like. It, coming right through me and then coming out of me. Okay. And, and it's just, I felt like that those were sacred places. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And with all the water around here. Oh, oh I know God. the water is powerful. Oh, very powerful. powerful. Yeah. And anytime you get a chance to be around it, be mm -hmm. around it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I met yeah. fantastic people. I felt like I came here to meet my, my soul family. Oh my goodness, that's so funny you say that because I've just spent the weekend going through these journals and in 2009, there was a woman here, uh, Monica uh, Lemley Piercy, who owned Heart of Unity and I went in for her. She did a lot of more mentoring type things and she called herself a psychic and a medium. And she said, and I was like complaining about being back in North Bay because I really did not want to be back here and other circumstances brought me back here. And you know, I said, I want to leave. And she said, you can't leave. And she said, you have to be here because this is where you're going to meet your soul family. And then I just feel like, especially in the last couple of years, since I come back, because I left and I did leave and come back, <laughs> 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 you know, and then just in the last couple of years, I just like the man of people that, and it's, and it's all been gearing up for this time that we're in right now and why we're here and what our purpose is and everyone collectively just by um, being in the same space together we're um, boosting we're like uh, generators not generators what's the word we're amplifying each other's gifts and abilities and being together we're actually able to connect like we're like little puzzle pieces and once we connect we're able to get more of the whole picture which is really fascinating so for me it just shows how important it is that we have everybody and everyone do that inner work and get their frequency up there and be open to whatever their gifts are because as soon as we get together 
then more and more information is going to come out and not just help ourselves, but on a global level as well. Absolutely. So on you've had um, a near death experience, two near death experiences. I can't remember. Uh, one. 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 So I wondered if you could talk about that in conjunction with what that did with you as far as your abilities went and why you came back. I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're hearing, you know, there's lots of shows now showing, talking about near-death experiences. So do you mind sharing a little bit about your experience? Well, I can. Um, it's interesting, but um, at the same time, every time I talk about it, it just, I just feel this wonderful energy going through me that's unbelievable. Uh, I remember being on the um, um, the gurney and then being brought into the, um, the uh, operating room and uh, I was getting a big operation at the time. And then I remember the mask going over my face and then um, I remember a light thing. And then I remember going like shooting onto the other side, like no darkness at all, just all light. And when I got there, there was a bridge and it was like this and beautiful and the trees all around and the flowers, the colors were amazing. Okay. And I remember this man on the other side of the bridge standing there waiting and I was gliding over the bridge, over towards him, and his arms were opening up like this. So then he enveloped me into his arms, and he said, I know you want to go back, but you promised me you would do a lot of work, a lot more work for me. And he says, I will be with you always. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Everybody has a different name for him. Uh, I call him Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not a religious fanatic, but I'm a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. And the warmth from that hug was like nothing you ever felt in your life. Okay. It was so filled with love, like the best day, the best moment, the best thing you ever had in your life was that hug. Mm -hmm. And that pure love. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So it just made you want to say, okay, I'll go back. I'll do the work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that I went back and. Uh, did you have it? Did you have a hard time? Like when you came back being around other people or um, how was that for you when you came back, having been in front of all that unconditional love and light and comfort when you came out of it that's all you wanted to feel that's you only wanted to be around people who are loving and kind and you know and um it was hard because you come back and you're in a harsh world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it took me a few years to adjust mm -hmm. and there were certain things i couldn't drink or eat anymore mm -hmm. it was just I was a coffee hound. I used to drink a, a whole pot of coffee a day. I couldn't even smell it. Wow. Yeah, it just made me. That's sick. a good one to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I ended up, um, I, I had quit smoking for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I started up again about probably a year later. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that you change, but certain things that stay the same. Mm -hmm. And it took me another 10 years. Yeah, because I was 45 when uh, I did the big changes. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. And did it change anything as far as your gifts or um, on, you know, did you feel guided to do anything different or still be doing the spiritual counseling type work? It was bringing me more towards the spiritual counseling work, okay? Mm -hmm. Because at the time I had been working 
at another place, at another job. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I love that job, mm -hmm. but, you know. Yep. Spirit calls. Spirit calls. Mm -hmm. I love that. So um, for people getting readings from you, you can do them on the phone. You can do them through Zoom if you like. Although I know you, um, a lot of people would prefer to be in person. So, um, and I get that because people want to feel that energy in that. So one of the things that we have done because you don't have space right now to be able to see people is we've opened it up at 176 at uh, Earthlight Energies and Sweet 1C. And on Tuesdays, um, we have that time spot put aside for Janet so that she can do in-person readings here if you wish. And you can contact her. I have information on my website. Um, there's a link there to her webpage. And um, she has a website. You're on Facebook as well, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. Under, what are you under on Facebook? Are you under Janet. your full name, Janet Graham? Janet Graham, yeah. Okay. Yeah, made me think. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So maybe you could talk a little bit about the readings. Like, do you, are they half hour? Are they an hour? Um, could you just talk a little bit about what services you offer? Um, well, most of the time the readings are an hour. Um, there's a reason for that because when spirit has a lot to tell you, my mouth doesn't shut up. So it's as simple as that. Um, I do do half an hour readings, but it's very hard for me to do, okay? Um, but I like to get into detail. I like to tell you exactly what I see and how I see it, okay? Because they're showing me all these pictures in my head, and I need to pass them on to you so you understand how I'm seeing it. And then you can take that and do whatever you want with it after, you can tell me how much is coming and how much is not coming. Believe me, I have a lot of people that do that. So my record's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And and I think on that note, I want, oh, sorry. So um, you offer our service. Um, so you do readings, but would you also started doing some tea leaf readings as well? I do tea leaf readings. Um, I do, sometimes I can even do a little bit of your past life. I can do... Um, a variety of so do you things. do any to use any tools to use tarot cards or anything like that or is it just straight from the person what, how much in information do you need to be able to do a reading on a person none i just need to look at you and i can get into your energy and after i get into your energy you know sometimes i need to ask you a question mm -hmm. one question but it's just to relax you because if you're there all stiff, you know, how do I do, you know, what is she going to say? Mm -hmm. And they're freaking out on me. So I need you to calm down so I can get in there and I have a wicked sense of humor. Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I, yes. <laughs> I will use that on you. I'm, I swear I will use that on you. <laughs> but I like to get into your energy and when, once I'm in there, Okay, and we start talking and relaxing. It just flows. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you're all stiff and full of anxiety, then it's not going to flow because I'm getting a block, a block, a block. And I need you to just be calm and let me. You're fading out a little bit. I'm going to have to get you to move a little bit closer, I think. Okay, or I'll move the computer a bit closer. So, on that, you know, people often ask, like, um, can you get information? So uh, often people con are concerned about permission and getting information about other people and whether or not they have the right to get that information. And I know I've asked you this question before too, because, you know, in Reiki, we, we have very strict, um, I don't want to guideline, well, rules, I would say it's a rule. It is a rule because you need to have permission to send energy to people. Um, but when it comes, and I asked you this question because it was a bit perplexing for me at the time. It's like, well, you know, do I really have the right to ask a question about another person if I don't have their permission? So I wondered if you could just talk about that because it was a, it really helped me to understand it when you explained it to me. Well, um, as far as what spirit shows me, spirit wouldn't show you something unless they want 
you to pass that message on, okay? Because to them, it's important enough, okay, that you have that permission to kind of go into their, that little window and um, explain to them that it's okay, or this is what I'm getting from spirit, because they need to hear that message, okay? And now if you're doing it for reasons other than, um, well, for, I'll give you a good example. If a wife comes in to me and asks me if her husband's having an affair, okay? No, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna see it. They won't show it to me, okay? Because that's something between you and your husband and you have to figure that out, okay? So it's more of spirit wants to give you the messages that are truly important. Okay, like uh, how about um, when people have passed on, mm -hmm. okay, they've lost their mom, their dad, their child. Those things are important and they wanna know how they're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's easy, okay, ask them. Mm -hmm. I just call them in and I ask them to come in and they're pushing their way in mm -hmm. because they want to say, I'm first, I'm first, I'm first, mm -hmm. okay. Move you back in the picture here. There we go. <laughs> so back, but back to that. Um, so if a husband came or a wife came in and said, "Is my husband or wife having an affair, or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever?" You wouldn't tell them. Nope. Isn't that information that they would need to know? Nope. Wow. They need to find out on their own. Okay. okay. That's the thing because it's between the two of you right now. Mm -hmm. It's not that you're passed away or anything like that, or you have an illness. Mm -hmm. I can see the illnesses and stuff, mm -hmm. but not. So, and I think the way you explained it to me too, is that if it's um, in, if that it's in conjunction with yourself. So if I was asking a question about one of my children, because it's always about my kids, but one of my, one of my kids is always like, well, what information did you get from me? I said, I didn't ask anything about you because <laughs> I didn't think I had the right to ask that question. First of all, it's your life. If you want to know, you book the appointment. But the other, but then you said, well, there's you can get that information in in relation to yourself. So I wondered if maybe you could explain that a little bit more. I can't get information when it comes to myself. No, no, not about you. But if I go in and I want to ask a question about my daughter, you said to me that that information, I would only get the information based on how. I am in that relationship, not, I couldn't go in there and get other information about my daughter. That's true. Is, am I explaining that properly? No. Okay. <laughs> wow, that's why I asked you the question. <laughs> that's okay. Um, it just feels like uh, if, say you were asking me questions about your, your beautiful daughter, mm -hmm. who we won't name, mm -hmm. um, but- um, I have three of them. So that way they won't know who it is. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, when there's something that she needs to know about them, if it's something that's critical, like something that's um, like really, really worrying her, then I have that permission to help to get rid of that anxiety by telling her what they're, they're showing me. Okay, because sometimes they'll just put up a big hand and it's a block. And they'll tell me no, okay? Or if they'll just go, mm -hmm. then that tells me it's gonna be fine. Okay. But you gotta pay attention. And sometimes, okay, spirit with me is, is hilarious because they do things and say things that will just make you laugh your head off. Oh my God, I'm gonna tell this the peach story. <laughs> so there was a group of us that, there were three of us and Janet was coming later at my house and we were just chatting and we were talking about you know the work that we were doing with our energy and working with higher dimensional beings and you know it, for me I experience it through energy and I, I can tell their frequency and we're saying yeah like we're really trying to figure out how we can communicate better for them with them get better messages and how do we know they're even hearing us and you know, so, and then we got into this whole conversation about peaches because of peach tea that Janet had brought to me. And I made this silly comment about it not being, it was really great peach tea. It wasn't too peachy. 
which started us on this whole conversation about peaches and how there's a couple of us that can't actually handle the skin of peaches. And then they were all making fun of me because of what I have to don rubber gloves and get, um, you know, tongs to pour hot water over the peach. And so we're just rolling there on the couch, just laughing about this, all these peach stories and everything. And then Janet comes in and she, she, there was something that Janet wanted to do. And I said, oh, let's just write it down on a piece of paper, what you want. And, and like, it's already happened. We'll write it all out. And then we'll all send it around. All of us are Reiki people. We'll just send it around and we'll, we'll give it two minutes of Reiki each. We'll put some nice music on and just, you know. So we're going around the room with this piece of paper, sending it Reiki. All of a sudden, Janet opens up her eyes and she goes, I see a gigantic peach. And we just started laughing because it's like, oh my God, they're hearing us. And they sent the information through to her to let us know that they're there and they're hearing us. And what better way than to show a sense of humor than a great big fat peach. So, exactly. and there's a lot more to that story, which turned into a really phenomenal night, but we'll leave it at that. So, um, anything else that people have maybe misconceptions, like where did that whole feeling of, you know, people not believing in psychics or spiritual counselors, or, you know, sometimes people have misconceptions about that. So I wondered if maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Well, what people don't understand is um, everybody who does what I do or what you do, okay, when we get messages from spirit, when we, um, you know, try to tell people what we're seeing and hearing and things, that every one of us is different and we read differently, okay? So some might be happy being called a psychic. I'm just not happy being mm -hmm. called that, mm -hmm. okay? And some will exaggerate and um, go further than they need to go. Mm -hmm. And it confuses people. I am a very down to earth person. So what I see, I tell you. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not, that's what I see, mm -hmm. okay? I'm not doing anything to hurt you. I want to help you, mm -hmm. but, but. So any other, you know, any other things that you've heard? I, I'm just trying to think of some of the reasons why, you know, some of the, the naysayers out there about, um, psychic messages or spirit messages or messages, people, you know, get them. And, but if we're all connected, you know, and yeah. And, and some people say, well, you know, I don't, everyone, I guess everyone thinks that they're inside this little, I had a conversation with someone about this not long ago. Like we we feel that we're, we're, you know, no one can see inside of this, what we're thinking, what we're feeling. And I keep explaining to people, yeah, we do. Like people get it through energy, how they, you can just go into a room and you might think that you're keeping all that stuff inside of you, but energetically you're sending it out there. And maybe some people are more in tune to picking up those messages than others. And sometimes it's just the way people behave around you because they don't quite know what's going on with you, but they're setting some, uh, some trigger off. So, you know, some people say, well, it's a violation of my privacy if you're getting this information about me and I, and you're telling me, well, I know you always ask people, but you know, how, and then people kind of go, well, I want to keep my thoughts private. Well, they're not really private because there's all kinds of very, very intuitive people out there and they might not even tell you, but they're picking information up from you. I mean, that's what our whole body is made up of is, is we're a big receiver of information. So we're not, all that stuff isn't as hidden as we think it is. And then really where I see the spiritual counseling coming in is that we might already be getting this information, but we want confirmation of it or it's sitting there in our light body, but we ha can't access it because we don't know how to. Um, and I lost my train of thought about what I was going to say with that, but it was, um, you know, people who are, who think that that's private 
and people shouldn't be tapping into that. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Do you know what I'm trying to kind of say with it? Well, well, for the most part, when you walk into a room and you have a, a whole bunch of people in there and they're all looking and staring and wondering, you know, what they're going to say or what somebody else is going to say. Well, right off the bat, okay, they're transferring that thought to you mm -hmm. and they don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. If they just sat there quietly, just thought their own thoughts, you know, or just think about positive things, okay, then a lot of people wouldn't be able to pick up those thoughts. Mm -hmm. I can walk into a room and sometimes uh, I can pick up, uh, you know, three people's thoughts and other times I can walk into a room and it's like a blank stare. Mm -hmm. You pick up nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's what mood are you in? Mm -hmm. Your mood is all about how you receive or how you give. Right. Okay. So that's really important too. And I love it when people say, well, how do you do this? It's easy. You just sit there, you do this, this, and this, and they go, I can't do that. Sure you can. Focus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. we don't trust a lot of the information that we get, right? No, no we don't. Yeah. Or yeah. we're too busy. We're too busy in our 3D world, like working, 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 and we're missing all the impulses of information that we're getting. But people are looking for complication. It's not complicated. Right. Yeah, I know. That's what they're Talking making. <laughs> How many times have I said that? that? It's not complicated. Sit there, just relax, let the thoughts come in. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's us that don't trust ourselves. So we don't trust the words we're sending. Mm -hmm. But when you get to a point when you let go and you give to spirit and you say, okay, with spirit, just whatever you want me to know, just stick it in my head. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you pass on those messages. People would look at you. How did you know? I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Spirit knows. Right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's when you can trust fully. Yeah. Yes, but you are very gifted. <laughs> That's you. your superpower. <laughs> that I know. <laughs> and I know for myself because I've been, you know, I've been working with a higher dimensional being and I was getting, and I was very like, you know, because of the way my analytical brain works, it's like, okay, well, it has to be like this for now, because this is the only way I can trust, not trust it, but I want to make sure that the information I'm getting in is accurate. And if I got some really big information, I'd call Jan and go, okay, I got this. Did you get the same thing? And it's, so it was, it's great to have that like feedback as to whether or not you're getting, you know, accurate information. And it really flexes that intuitive muscle. And I would say we all have it. We all oh, have yeah. the ability to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's like we overcomplicate it. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> so other people who have trouble believing in psychics so or spiritual counselors, and they say things like, "Oh, they looked you up on Facebook," or they, you know. They're looking for, um, you know, how they say that all of our body movements and and they that you ask questions, um, and then the person you're you're watching the person and and getting feedback from the person as to what the answer could be. But in my experience, I I rarely go in there asking questions. I think I did the first time I had a list of questions because that was my experience as far as, well, not necessarily. There's lots of readers out there who just say, no, you know, I'm just going to read you. And if you have anything at the end, let me know. Um, but you just, you're just talking. So how can you kind of, I mean, there's still lots of people that we're never going to convince that this is real and you're getting quality information but what would you say to the people maybe that are sitting on the fence and, and might be listening to the naysayers on one side saying, no, none of that is real. It's not true. Well, I would say, give it a try. Mm -hmm. Open your mind. Oh, open your heart. Mm -hmm. That's the two things you have to open up and then just sit and listen. Okay. To what they have to say, record it, write it down, whatever, and then give it a, a couple of months and then look back and see what was said and what, you know, what answers you got. Mm -hmm. And you'll see how much of it is actually laying on. 
So there's two other things I want to talk about is is um, timelines and dates. So I know. <laughs> so on the date side, you know, because lots of times we'll be, we'll say, okay, well, this is gonna. I know you've said to me this will happen in like three weeks, three months, three years, whatever. Because somehow you get like a timing thing most spiritual advisors, counselors, psychics, whatever, um, really hate having any time associated with it because, and I get it because spirit operate, there is no, I mean, in our, in our earth bound world that we, you know, planet that we live on and as humans, time is very linear, but for spirit, for these higher dimensional beings that we're working with, Time doesn't have the same meaning. So, you know, for uh, for their soon could be a couple of years. <laughs> no, that's absolutely Very true. Very soon could yeah. be a couple of months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you get timing, so maybe first we could just talk about timing itself. Like if you get, if people first ask you about time and then perhaps talk about that, and then maybe when you get information about timing, talk about that. So those two aspects of it. Well, for the most part, I don't get a day, an hour, you know, and anything like that. Um, but when I ask them if they could give me a timeline, just bring it down to a, a reasonable timeline. A lot of times what they show me is um, the, the buds out on the trees. So that represents spring. Mm -hmm or they'll show me full summer, mm -hmm. okay? So they'll show me a season. Mm -hmm. And if it's the beginning of the season, the buds are tiny. Mm -hmm. And if it's the end of like the spring season, then you see the almost out full bloom, mm -hmm. okay? So they'll show me like that. So I can say, oh, it's early spring, you know, or late spring and into the summer. So I'll see it like that. But I wish I could get the timing. Oh my goodness. Well, that sometimes too though. So that's what people ask, but sometimes too, you'll just say, oh, it's in this, 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 and this. Yeah. So that's being given you directly from spirit, right? Exactly. Right. So, but if someone asks you, then you're getting more of the images, but it seems like when you're getting it from, directly from spirit, it's more like numbers. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else around timing that you want to say for people? It's just very hard to get the timing, okay. no matter who you are. I know there are some fabulous readers out there that can get right down to the time. And it's just, oh, I love that. But, um, Excuse me. <laughs> but for the most part, timing is take it and go, OK, spirit. Whenever that time is, just let it be, you know, as soon as possible. Well, one of the things that I reckon, I noticed that with you, especially, is the closer it seems to be, the more details you have. Yeah, that's is that, true. Does that seem to be an accurate, is that always the case or just sometimes? No, that seems to be always the case, but I never really took notice of it before mm -hmm. until you just told me. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I noticed that um, when things are coming closer, that all of a sudden, like de more details come out, more details, mm -hmm. because details are important to me. So when, especially when I do a reading, so when I give you little details, they might not mean so much now, but at the time when it happens, those details will become mm -hmm. stuck in your head. Yep. And the details are really like I'm. I'm actually pretty surprised sometimes at the details, and and sometimes I go, mm, yeah, mm -hmm. no, I don't think so. And then it happens, and it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> How is that? But then I want to talk about timelines because right now we are because of what's happening energetically on on in on the Earth. Just because we're going through the Earth is actually moving through. Um, a different part of the um, the universe. I'll just use that. Um, I don't want to get all the people hung up on all the technical terms, but you know it is moving into a higher um, into a higher um, a different part of the galaxy. Um, the uh, solar um, 
in those solar flares that are hitting the earth are impacting us. And then the actual earth itself has a frequency and that's measured through the Schumann resonance, if anyone's actually interested in looking at that. And when that Schumann resonance goes up, then that's where people start to really feel it energetically. They can feel tired. They can have all these different symptoms from it. So there's that whole aspect of the earth is actually from a frequency perspective changing. And then everything that's going on globally right now, there's, there's this fireification of timelines. Now there could be multiple timelines and the way, I don't want to lose people with this, but you know, we are, you know, the, we exist in this linear time frame, but there's higher aspects of ourselves and time is, is existing all at once. And if it is, then these higher or even our past lives are happening at the same time as now. So that, that must mean there's all these multiple timelines and it could be that some of the predictions that I'll call them predictions or some of the aspects of the reading you're getting is because we're on this timeline. But what I've noticed is that all it takes is one just slight redirection or one decision or one conversation, one choice that all of a sudden it shifts everything over into a whole different timeline. So does that actually, when you're doing that reading, are you seeing it based on, I don't even know if it's this, if you can be that precise, but are you reading based on the per, this current person's timeline? Um, or are you reading on, well, if they make this choice, then that's the timeline they're gonna head towards. I'm basing it on, uh, well, what they show me is it, it's all about um, what they decide. If they decide to make this decision and go this way, then it's going to go that way, okay? And if they are wanting to stay in this position, then that timeline is not going to change. Okay. Okay. I'm moving in and out timelines. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. I just switch a little bit and it I get out of the screen. But yeah. Oh, there I, I go again. Okay. So um, anything else about timelines? Is that sometimes why people will say, well, that didn't happen? Um, how come you predicted this date? Because we're talking about global events too, because right. we've been working a lot trying to get some answers around dates and timelines as to when disclosure is going to happen and when things are going to start coming out. And of course, mm -hmm. out in, um, you know, out there with all the people that are making all these predictions, you know, times, time, times are coming and going and then people are getting upset and saying, well, you were wrong. But I think it's it's not that simple. I think that there's there's different forks in the road, and if if things are keep going on this trajectory, then that's the timeline will get met. But if the timeline doesn't get met, it means something else has happened or occurred. Exactly, exactly. And you might be surprised by what has occurred. It usually is something that has is going to improve. Okay, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But um, the timelines, oh my goodness. I just wish I could get them better. Um, but I found out too, that a lot of the, the things that are, um, I, I tell, tell them I see, okay, doesn't happen in one to three, two years. Sometimes it happens five years down the line, mm -hmm. but they still got all those papers and right. they will still tell you, okay, and that this was this, and this was this, and it happened exactly like you said, mm -hmm. okay. But um, the last, I want to say the last two years, the timing has been coming, like it feels like it's squishing together and coming together faster. But before that, it was like up to five years before something would happen. Wow, okay. Yeah. Okay, so what are... What are some of the practices that people can do if they want to develop their own spiritual counselor for themselves <laughs> Number <laughs> or one. work on their intuition? <laughs> so what are the things that they can do to um, facilitate that within themselves and trust it? <clears throat> Number one, um, I would say meditate. Even if it's five minutes a day, sit there, relax, close your eyes, okay? and then just meditate. 
listen to beautiful music, mm -hmm. um, go walk in nature, or go for a canoe ride, you know, do all the things that will make you feel one with, one with yourself, one with nature, mm -hmm. okay? Drink more water. Yep. Very, very good for your system and helps clear out a lot of negative thoughts. When you get negative thoughts, think of three positive thoughts. Okay, so you'll have a pattern of being able to change that negativity. We think about pink unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, think about pink unicorns. That's an inside joke. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Um, no, just do the little things. It's the little things. Like I said, it's always the little things that bring you forward faster than when you're overcomplicating things. Well, uh, I got to learn how to, you know, I, I, I gotta, I just don't know how to do this. How am I going to do this? And they're talking, they're all confused. How to meditate. Close your freaking eyes. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you this question and let you chat for a sec. Cause I just have to go do something, but, um, uh, I just thought of another question in that. So how is it easy is it to read people that now you've become really close to, and you know, a lot about them. I'll just let you answer that question. How do I do that? Well, because um, spirit wants them to know exactly what's going on and how they're progressing and how they're doing good. Now, if you think about the some of the people that I've associated with more and more in the last year, we're all of the same. We're all spiritual. We're all um, there for each other. Okay. Nobody's there to um, take anything from anybody else. We're all that we share, mm -hmm. okay? And the more you're about sharing and caring, the more comes in. Right. Okay. So you're not, so I guess the way to kind of say that differently is, do you, because some people, I've had people read me, but it's like, oh, that you're just getting that information because now you know more about me. No. So it's it's more like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So to me, then it doesn't ring as true because it's like, well, you know, maybe I should go talk to someone else because you know too much about me. So you're getting that information. So you're now mentally assuming things rather than spiritually connecting. Mm -hmm. So, but that doesn't happen the more you... you okay. No, because... I don't um, think about what you do, where you go, or, or who's involved in your life. Mm -hmm. When you ask me a question, okay, it comes directly from spirit. Right. You, okay. you, you see that. I mm -hmm. don't sit there yeah, and I'm on and I just go blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. When you got to think about it, you know, they're, they're searching for, mm -hmm. you know, everything yeah. that you have been through and mm -hmm. who you are. Hmm. Yeah. Oops, I disappeared again. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. So um, what are your, anything else that, oh, I know what I want to talk about too. So one of the things that we've been doing, kind of experimenting a little bit with, because I often will get clients and because I get stuff very energetically and I'll know that they have a block. And sometimes I know after a few Reiki sessions that that block is because it's from some past, it's not clearing because it's not, it's from some past life. So just to give you an example, for people who are listening, I had a client come in, young woman, and she had been to see a chiropractor for like four years because of some issues she was having with her back. And I kind of went, hmm, like that seems, and nothing against chiropractors, please don't, people don't get mad about me making this comment. But it, to me, it was like, clearly nothing was changing. There's something that's blocking this, that despite the other good work the chiropractor was doing, this was not clearing. And as soon as I did the Reiki session, I went, oh, I got this like right away energetically that it was a past life. And I said, are you, I said to the client, are you willing to talk to Janet? Because I think it's a past life. And if we know a little bit more about what might be there, then we can do something to release that. So she agreed. And then you told her that she had a spear or a knife or something stuck in her back. And then we were able to, through this special process that I do with Reiki, we were able to release that block from her. And then afterwards I was talking to you and I said, well, 
if it was from a past life, then why wouldn't she have her whole life had that issue with her back? And your response was that because of, that was the age that she was stabbed. Yeah, that was the age. So it's not going to occur again until she becomes that age. Yeah. So that to me was so fascinating because I thought, you know, how many people have gone to everybody? Like they've gone to acupuncture, they've gone to Reiki, they've gone to the doctor and nobody can find out what's wrong with them. And now I'm starting to see, well, oftentimes it is something that's from a past life that needs to be cleared. And then by seeing someone like yourself, um, we can really hone in on that and see, you know, how can we clear that? And then once we can clear those things, then the person gets rid of the pain. Yeah. It's fabulous. Really, it's really it? cool. Yeah. It's really interesting. And of course, everyone's so fascinated with past lives and stuff too. But do you get um, past life information? Does it just automatic? Is it, again, it just comes up because the person needs to know this information for something to heal? Or is it just kind of a, oh, guess what? In your past life, you were this? No, um, the information will come up all of a sudden. Okay. And I know that now is the time for them to heal from that pain. Mm -hmm. So then you take over and, you know, you can do that, mm -hmm. which is fascinating when you do your work, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> but uh, no, and then you take over and then you do that part. And it's like, you watch them after, they're amazed. Mm -hmm. I know one of the, the, the clients that we share and she goes, I, I, I don't know what to say. I've gone to doctors. I've gone to all over the place trying to find out why I have this pain. And she goes, I can't believe it's gone. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I, I just can't. <laughs> yeah, and I tell people, please don't say that anymore because you're going to bring it back. <laughs> just let it go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Huh. Exactly. Um, and there's other benefits to seeing, um, you know, like I, I know for you, it's been, oh, some, somebody is calling their angel. I can hear it in the background. <laughs> angel Janet, spirit answers. Not today though, <laughs> or at this moment. Um, you know, and I think where you've helped people too, I've seen and heard is through like people who have lost somebody and they're having a really hard time with the grief of losing that person and you give them closure or give them enough to give them some peace, you know, around, around that. So there's lots of reasons. It doesn't have to be what I call looky looing in someone else's life, which you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> um, you know, and the, uh, you know, there's the healing because that's healing. That's, and I guess what some people don't realize is that coming to see someone like a spiritual counselor can be quite healing because there could be things that you're struggling with on an, um, uh, your inner self that you can't get any answers around and then i know you've been able to provide that that information to people too so um people need to kind of think about it differently and it's yeah it's hugely healing and it gives you answers and there's things that we often struggle with like well is this right or is this wrong like how do i know and you'll also give people tools and resources or refer them on to other people as well so Anything else that you can think of as far as, um, you know, misconceptions that you would like to kind of, you know, talk to that would ease people? Well, a lot of people uh, feel that once they come and see a person like me, that they, they have to see us on a regular basis. That is so not true. Okay. Then you start to rely on us. Mm -hmm. on me for the answers mm -hmm. no no you have to learn how to rely on yourself mm -hmm. okay that's why i teach you uh you know if this feels right okay do you feel like a ball in your stomach or do you feel like a flutter if you feel like a flutter that's good you feel like a ball Ooh, that's not good mm -hmm. okay so ask yourself what do i need to know how do I need to do things? Mm -hmm. Okay. I am here to help you to a point, but then you have to help yourself also. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I know for myself, even, you know, it's like, well, 
because we built this relationship up and we're working together and um i've even said to you oh you know like I don't want, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, asking you because I've figured it, but I always try to figure it out myself before I call you to just get affirmation around it or figure out a different way to look at it. Um, so, because I don't, I don't want to become dependent on that. I want to trust the information that I'm getting. And, and sometimes we have to get the wrong information so sometimes that we can learn. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But always learn to rely on yourself and what spirit is telling you. Right? So how can you discern between what you're mentally, how can people say, well, how do I know that's not just something I'm thinking about as opposed to what spirit is giving me? Well, put it this way, you're walking around, you know, you're thinking of a, a problem and then you just let it go. And then an hour later, you get an answer in your head. Well, that answer is coming from spirit because you threw it out there and let it go. So now they're able to answer you. Mm -hmm. clearly but when you overthink it and you think 10,000 different answers oh and my questions, god that's what i do <laughs> okay i own that one <laughs> <laughs> well then you know because um sometimes you just hear your own voice in your head but your own voice is your higher self right mm -hmm. and it comes from spirit but what about emotions? Because sometimes we can get so caught up in our emotions. Yeah. How does how does that? So do you have to be in any kind of a, um, you know, I don't mean a, like a trance state or anything, but do you have to be any kind of emotional state or mental state in order to do good quality readings or it doesn't really matter? Um, and how much, and I guess the second part of that question then is, well, how much can, if we're in an emotional state and right. it's something close to us, how can we then trust it that we're not allowing our emotions to override and give us wrong answers? Well, then that's when I would recommend that you ask somebody, okay? Mm -hmm. um, because when our emotions are totally involved, we're not going to get the answer, okay, the right answer. Right. Because you're going to get it. It comes from emotion. So you're going to get the imagine you think you should have. Right. You want to have. You're not going to get. <laughs> you're not going to get. <laughs> okay. But for yourself, when you're doing the readings, do you have to be like, is there any particular, do you have to be mindful of any particular state of mind or emotion that you're in? Or the spirit just doesn't care. It just comes through. Uh, for the most part, I would say, don't come and see me if I'm pissed. Okay. And we should intuitively know that. <laughs> if I'm short with you, okay, I'm pissed. Ah, uh, that's the Taurus. <laughs> but um, for the most part, fear just comes right in. Okay. Anytime, no matter what I'm feeling. But um, I just don't like to do readings if I'm pissed. Mm -hmm. Because that means somebody has pushed me to a point where I'm done. Yeah. So. so, and I know that you've had, you know, some health challenges as well. So do, does the readings, do your readings get, I know, of course, obviously you don't want to do readings when you're not feeling well, but does that impact the quality of information you get or spirit coming through? Does that block anything for you? Um, it tells me what, you know, when people ask me a question or something, the spirit will tell me stuff. But I still, um, I feel tired very, very quickly. And so it's like, no, no, I got to rest. I got to just go and rest. I get the, the accurate information, but it comes in slower. Right. So that's why I've learned how to take naps. <laughs> yeah. So... Are you channeling the information or how do you get the information? How does it, like, can you describe for us? Like, is it a visual? Is it a packet of information? Is it words? Are you channeling something through? Well, depending on what it is, I see a picture. It's like a running video in my head. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I can stop it at any point. And then I can examine that little picture. And then I can tell you what I'm seeing. Sometimes I'll hear it. Okay. And sometimes I'll taste it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I smell it. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You know, like I'll smell a, a woman's perfume very, very strong. And I'll say to the room, um, who wore this kind of perfume? I smell roses very, very strongly. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, oh, my aunt did. Mm -hmm. And then a message will come through from that aunt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, you know, like I informed a lady that she was going to have a baby. And she goes, I can't have babies. She said, and I said, yeah, you, you were going to have a, a daughter and name after Rose. And she uh, contacted me about two years later and said, I have a, a, a daughter. And we called her Rose. Wow. So, that's so amazing. That's, that's like, so I love hearing those stories. Yeah. yeah. And how can, I know we kind of talked about this, but how can, so who are the, who are the people that come to see you? So how can, you know, what do you, what would you like to say to people to say, you know, if you're experiencing this, then here's what, how I can help you. Well, the only thing I can tell them is when they're experiencing um, different smells coming in, uh, voices, songs that keep repeating in their head, I can tell them that that usually is associated with people who are, have passed on mm -hmm. and just want to give them a message. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can tell them if there's things that make them feel yucky and um, like they're going crazy sometimes, well, then talk to me and let's see what we can, we can do from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see why you're feeling that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not a psychiatrist. I just can see in your energy what's going on. And what about, so people who are going through major life changes, want to be able to make some decisions, um, they would, you know, those are people obviously you know, oh. happen to me, there I am. Um, so with that, so anyone who's making life decisions, like do you do, so I guess I'm, what I want to say is like, so when is a good time for, like when, what, when would you recommend people come to see you? Like what are, what can you offer to, them um like where would they be at to want to come and book a session with you they could be anywhere okay mm -hmm. they could come from um just stress in their life mm -hmm. just a, a child that they're worried about anything mm -hmm. okay and if they come for a quick session they can find out what's going on or they can say or they call me on the phone you know um you know i have some things going on right now I need a short session. No problem. No problem. Okay. Yeah. okay. So basically, if they're making any life decisions or they're struggling with anything, even if they're struggling with some internal stuff that they they feel like they need some answers or um, direction around, then they could do that. Well, they I don't give you. them the answer. Right. Okay. Because so you're going to just get whatever what spirits going to give no, you. No. No. Right. They. I don't tell you what to do. I tell you what I see. If you go this way or if you go this way. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to you to make that decision. Yeah. Um, there was something else I was going to ask you. How are we doing with the time here? Oh, I guess we better close this off. So for, um, oh, and it was a really good one too. We'll have to maybe do another session. It's exploding around out there, but I can't put it back into words because I was thinking about the time. Um, so anything else that you can think of, like just to encourage people to um, book a session with you? Well, I always say, if, you know, if there's something that you need or you're changing your life in, in any way and you're looking for some kind of direction, okay, well, I can discuss that with you and you can you, you know, we can work around that to mm -hmm. see what you need or if you really don't need to move. Mm -hmm. Okay, some people figure they need to move all the time. Oh, gee. Yeah. Would that be a certain person that you're talking to right now? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, if you want a reading, you know, book one. Okay. If you just feel the vibe. Try it. Yeah. Just try it. Just try it. Cause there's nothing. Yeah. So the key thing is it's, and you can, you uh, generally book an hour 
Um, I would recommend an hour only because I think you'd find half an hour just too short, but you do do half hour readings and people, that's all people have time for because it can be a financial thing too. And it's $120 an hour, correct? Correct. And people need to uh, uh, report it in some way. You're not going to want to handwrite it because the information I can tell you right now comes in so fast, you won't be able to keep up. Um, and you can book sessions through Janet at uh, her phone number, which I will put in the um, a link to her uh, website rather than just put it online here or in the video. I'll put it in a link below um, to her website. And she does, uh, any, you can do readings for anybody across the world, uh, any time zone. That's the beauty of being able to do this because it doesn't matter if a person is in front of you or, um, you know, you're talking to them on the phone. Now, do you need a picture of them or anything or? No. Okay. No. Okay. And uh, anything final? Oh, Spirit Answers. I love that, uh, that name. So Spirit Answers is the name of her website and it's spiritanswers.one, I think. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> I'll put the, I'm sorry, I'll put it in the link below. <laughs> I don't have, and you have, do you have a business card? You're going to leave some of your business cards with me anyway. So, okay, well, thank you very much. And um, I just know that I'm sure we'll do another video with you. We'll might have some other cool and interesting things to talk about. Um, and thank you, everyone. I hope to see you in health, harmony, and happiness. Have yourself a fabulous day. Say bye, Janet. Bye.